Hi folks, so when we bought our Haas VM3 vertical milling machine, we asked if they would consider filming any of the assembly and building of the machine, and they said they would. So they threw uh, in a time-lapse camera, and this is at the factory in California, and I've rewatched this so many times, it's super cool. Watch it and take a look, there's so many cool little things that happen. Uh, look at the tool changer, look at when they put the sheet metal on, the way covers, I, just super fascinating. I appreciate them sitting a little behind the scenes. Here you can see it's doing a, a running a pretty long test routine of just motion and movement in the table. Awesome. And so here it is after it got rigged into our shop but before it was installed. And for those of you who've watched our channel, you guys know, you know, we learned how to machine and have used for the past 10 years Tormach milling machines, which are, they're called personal CNC machines. They're smaller machines that, you know, horse and a half power, maybe 18 inches of travel. But there's one thing that I think is amazing. It blew my mind. So take a look at this machine. Here's what they look like when you have it on there. Uh, they call it their stand or you go with the enclosure version. But look. Here's our VM3 naked, you know, before it had any of the sheet metal around it, and it has the same style. It's this sort of C-frame milling machine, which is, I remember the first time I saw that, it was just so cool to me. After the machine is finished uh, being assembled, after they've done the dry tests on it, they do two last things. They take a test part and then they do a ball bar test. So here you can see some footage from the test cut. So they make this part and it's pretty cool. They actually keep it in the in inventory for a year and it's got your serial number on it and some, I think, specs on your machine and it's facing, drilling, thread milling, milling, all the, the standard basic stuff you would do. Here's some rigid tapping too. I'm curious, do you guys, uh, I think we're gonna do more thread milling than rigid tapping, but I'm curious, do you guys disagree? Should we think about rigid tapping more than thread milling? We actually haven't really even cut with ours yet. I jogged it through uh, with a face mill, just hand jogging, because I've been working to figure out the offsets and heights and stuff, and I'm just being careful, and our first day of training is next Tuesday. So uh, I, yes, I am very excited. So far, I am learning that the VM table with the cross T slots, awesome for fixturing and setup, but is gonna be a little bit more work to clean it off, uh, which my goal is to do that every time we use it every night, which is not actually a small task. So we'll see what the long-term takeaways are from that. Uh, so yeah, there's the part when it's done. And here's the ball bar test. So this is super cool. So what this does is it, and I believe this one is made by Renishaw, who makes the probe and tool setter we've got. But see this uh, bar that's in between the spindle and the mag base? As it moves around, it's looking for any change in length in that bar, which would show something wrong, some form of inaccuracy in the linear ways and the ball screws and the table motion. And what's cool about this is this is pretty basic motion, but it's not. It's actually two different servos, two different screws, two different linear ways moving at different speeds to interpolate that circle around. And yes, I know in, in the world we live in, it's pretty cool that that's pretty easy, but it's not. Like there's a lot that could go wrong there. So these ball bar tests are ways to check that everything is like just absolutely dialed in. And then this thing also does, yeah, so it does a X, Z, and a Y, Z motion, which somehow checks column squareness. I need to think about that because I'm sure it's obvious, but it hadn't come to me yet. Uh, why that's checking column squareness. And then what's cool, and I can't wait to go check this tomorrow in the shop, is there's a PDF with these results apparently in the machine controller. So you can go look up what this was. So I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit more of the behind the scenes. This was all the stuff that happened uh, at the Haas factory in California. And what happened next was a trucker came, picked it up, and drove it across the country and if you want to watch the rest of it getting unloaded click here to a link to the next video where we rig it into our shop